Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you've seen the last video I posted on the channel, um, and if you haven't, um, I'll put a link up here, whichever corner it is. Um, I made a video about uh, five of the common issues you're going to run into when trying to repair vintage computers primarily. And um, one of those issues that I mentioned were floppy drives. And I mentioned that I was planning on doing a video in the future about repairing these early Mac floppy drives to get them working again. And um, as it is a pretty common thing you're going to have to deal with when you're repairing them. So that's what today's video is going to be. Now, um, first of all, before we get started, um, I'm going to be primarily in this video focusing on the earlier 1.44 and 800K drives. Um, they use the auto eject style mechanism. Um, so if you have either of those, this tutorial will apply to you. And I'm also going to be showing you how to fix two common issues with these drives. The first being cleaning dust, dirt, and grease buildup out of them. And the second would be the ejector mechanism and the issues you can face with that. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, and hopefully, this tutorial will help you if you have an early Macintosh um, from the late 80s through till the early 90s and you want to get it working again and your floppy drive is bugging out on you. Also, if you're new to the channel, um, I'm trying to start a schedule of posting at least three videos a month. So if you're interested in some of the stuff I've been doing recently and you want to see more, um, be sure to click the subscribe button. So yeah, with that said, um, before we get started, I have one quick message from today's sponsor, PCBWay. I just want to take a quick moment out of today's video to mention today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay now provides a whole host of PCB prototyping services, including rigid flex PCBs, surface mount stencils, and even assembly of your boards, as well as prototyping services such as 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, injection molding, and even OEM manufacturing. PCBWay is also currently hosting their fifth design contest, which runs through December 31st, so if you want to improve and show off your electronics design, skills be sure to check this out so if you happen to be in need of printed circuit boards or other prototyping services for your project be sure to give pcbway.com a try and now back to the video so the first issue we'll be talking about today will be dirt and dust buildup and old lubricant in these floppy drives and th this at least in my experience is also the more common of these issues that you'll run into some ways you can tell that your drive needs to be cleaned out and relubed are if you have issues when inserting discs into the drive properly and ejecting discs from the drive or if the drive fails to read discs properly and it's generally a good idea to clean out these drives regardless of whether you're experiencing any issues or not as they do build up quite a bit of gunk and debris over the years inside of them in order to do this uh, we'll have to disassemble a significant portion of the drive and there will be some slight differences in the first step of the assembly process depending on if your particular drive is an 800k or 1.44 megabyte variant. The easiest way to tell this is to look at the label on the side of the drive and if it's red that means that your drive is an 800k drive and likewise if it's blue then you have a later 1.44 megabyte drive model. Now that you know what model of floppy drive you have we'll begin the disassembly process. The first thing we need to do is put the drive into the loaded position. On an 800k drive um, all you have to do is move this little lever forward until the drive mechanism clicks into place and if your drive is gunked up pretty bad, you might have to sort of help it move into place. And on the later 1.44 megabyte drive, uh, you have to do one extra step, and that is to move the second lever out first before you can move the first one. So um, that is really the only specific step in this process. Of course, if you have a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive like the one I have here, you're going to have the extra step of folding this little tab here um, out and then uh, putting this part down. But other than that, the process moving on from now on out is basically the same between both of the two drive models. So I'm only going to be focusing on the 1.44 megabyte one because it's the only complete drive I have right now that needs some work done on it. For the next step, you're going to need a pair of pliers, preferably, although you can do it with your fingers. And basically, there are two springs located here and here on the uh, floppy drive that hold this bracket that contains the disks down um, to the rest of the drive. So basically what you want to do is uh, reach in here and undo these two clips. So now that we've removed these two springs or disconnected them, the next thing you want to do is take care of this plastic piece here. And basically what we want to do, just like with the springs, is unclip this little clip in the middle here and then slide it forward so that it will unclip here. This will make sure that we don't accidentally yank out the read and write heads um, from the drive when we remove this actual piece itself. Otherwise, this will catch and um, it will tear that off or bend it up to where it won't read the disc. And now we can feel free to slide and wiggle the eject mechanism back and forth and lift the actual drive 
tray thing here out of the floppy drive unit. Now that the top part of the mechanism is removed, we will need to go back and remove the spot on the sliding bracket. To do that, we will first have to take out the ejector mechanism here in the back corner, which we'll be taking a look at later in this video as well. In order to remove this, there are two Phillips screws located here and here that we will have to remove. Once the screws are out, you can carefully lift up on the mechanism and unplug the connector on the back side of the drive that connects to it too. And now that we have access to the bottom sliding bracket, um, we can remove all of these plastic washers that hold it in place using a screwdriver or pliers, being careful of course not to loose them, and then we can carefully lift the entire bracket out of the drive. At this point, the drive is now completely disassembled for cleaning, and these are the parts that you should have. For the cleaning process, you want to go around with isopropyl alcohol and clean away any of the dust and residual grease from the brackets and drive. If your drive is really dusty, you can also use compressed air during this step. For the top bracket, I usually take a bit of alcohol and pour it into the different moving parts and let it sit a bit. Be sure to pay attention to all the various points where the metal parts brush up against each other. You can then go back through and add new lubricant to all the moving parts. Ideally, you should use lithium grease as regular WD-40 doesn't last as long and it's more messy. However, I'm using it in mine since it's all I have around at this particular moment in time. So at this point you could reassemble the rest of the drive while you get the parts re-lubricated. However, there's one other thing that I want to show you um, that's another common issue with these floppy drives that you might want to take a look at while you're doing this, and that has to do specifically with the ejector mechanism slash ejector motor, whatever you want to call it. So basically inside of this part here is a small motor and gear reduction system, and basically inside of there, there are some small gears that one of which tends to go brittle over time and almost turn into like a Swiss cheese texture. Uh, and these can commonly break inside the drive, which is why sometimes your drive will just stop ejecting altogether and make a really bad noise. I've experienced this a few times and um, it's actually pretty easy to fix. And as a matter of fact, you can actually buy stuff like this which is basically just a replacement 3d printed gear um, you can also 3d print these yourself if you have a high enough resolution printer which unfortunately I do not so I can't do that now I actually can't find the drive I ended up putting this one in, as I bought it years ago to fix a drive I had so I'm just going to be showing you the process of how to fix this with a already existing Macintosh gear however of course if you were to do this with a replacement one you would just use that instead taking these apart is pretty simple all you have to do is simply unclip the little clip here here that uh, lets the metal plate come off. Um, you have to be careful with these as the plastic does tend to go brittle over time and um, if you're not careful you can break the tab off. Once you're inside of this compartment you should see a few gears here. We're going to have to remove one of them in order to access the one we actually need to replace and you'll be able to tell the one that we need to replace pretty easily because it's not only turned a different color than the rest of them but it's also um, the smallest one. And this can easily just be lifted out and you will then reinstall the new one in its place and then put the other gear back into place. And then of course you can go ahead and take the little door and reinstall it. Once you've done this, all of these steps to uh, fix your drive and you're still running into issues with the drive reading the disc, there are a few other things you can try. Uh, for one, it's important to, at some point in time, clean the read and write heads. Now, um, on most of these drives, you can use um, a cleaning disc as they are double-sided. However, the easiest way to do a really good job of getting it clean is just to take a Q-tip and some ice purple alcohol and just go in there and clean it yourself by hand. Um, of course, you should already have the drive out of the machine if you're doing some of these other things, so it should be a good opportunity to do that as well. And also, if that doesn't fix your issue, then you might want to check the floppy drive cable as well, as sometimes I've run into issues with those causing issues as well. So um, that was my brief tutorial on how to repair some common issues with uh, vintage Macintosh floppy drives. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the subscribe button and also be sure to check me out on Patreon. The links to my Patreon will be down in the description. Um, so if you want to help support my channel and get some bonus perks, then be sure to check that out as well. Anyway, with that said, that's going to be it for today's video. I want to thank everyone for watching and um, I want to also thank you guys a bunch for all the success I've had in some of my other recent videos. The channel has been growing once again, so I'm very happy for that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for today. So I'll see you guys all next time.